This is step two in my series of six videos on preparing your InDesign file for press. In our first video, we talked about double checking all of the measurements in your document to ensure it's been sized correctly. In the second video, I'm going to talk about how to ensure that all of your fonts are loaded. Now, as I mentioned before, though I'm currently working in CS3 here, InDesign introduced a wonderful pre-press feature in CS4 that alerts you in real time to any pre-press issues that are cropping up in your document. It's a robust tool and an awesome time saver, but if you don't have an understanding of the prepress issues that it's notifying you about, it's kind of useless because you're not going to have a reference point about why something needs to be fixed or how to fix it. So this series of tutorials is intended to provide an overview of all of the things you need to be mindful of when prepping your files for press. So let's talk about fonts. In a nutshell, you need to be sure that all of the fonts that you're using in your document are loaded. If they're not, InDesign will end up substituting other fonts in their place that may not look anything like the fonts you intended, which could end up with disastrous results. Now, if you're designing a simple document with just a small amount of type, there's a good chance you'll be able to spot any unloaded fonts just by looking at your screen and seeing that the font display is not the one you originally intended. But if you have, say, a long document with lots of text and that uses many different fonts, how are you able to spot whether or not your fonts are loaded? Well, there are two ways of doing this. The first is a visual cue that InDesign displays indicating that a font is not loaded. Now, I'm in normal view right now, and looking at my brochure here, I notice that my number seven up here is highlighted with this orange color. That orange color is not a design feature. That's not something I intended to appear there. Instead, that's, a, that's InDesign's orange highlight which is a way of telling me that this font is not loaded. Now this font, this highlighting feature is actually a preference in InDesign. So to double check that the preference is turned on, I'm first gonna go up here to InDesign, Preferences, Composition. And if we look here at Substituted Fonts, that is uh, checked. See, we have Highlight, and then there's all these items that uh, InDesign will highlight uh, if something is, is wrong and um, substitute fonts is the one we want. If that is unchecked for you, go ahead and check it. I'm going to click OK. And what I want to do is I want to um, replace this unloaded font that InDesign is alerting me to with, uh, with my intended, or I want to load that font. And another way to tell that that font is not loaded is if I go up here to my type menu in the control panel, I see that my font, my intended font, is Universe 55 Roman. But notice that 55 Roman is surrounded by brackets. That's InDesign way of saying that you're, you intended to use Universe 55 Roman, but that font is not currently loaded. I can click on my drop-down menu. I see all these other Universe fonts that are loaded. Notice that there are no brackets around them. But then I go down here to the bottom, and the checked font, which I'm using, is 55 Roman, but it has brackets, so it's not loaded. So what do we have to do? I have to go ahead and load that font. So I'm going to quickly go here to my Font Explorer font program. And um, as you can see, I was prepared for this. Um, when I was preparing this video, I have my universe fonts open, and all of my universe uh, fonts are listed and checked except for universe 55. So I'm going to go ahead and check that. I'm going to go back and oh, look, it loaded. The highlighting went away. I go up here to my type menu. 55 Roman no longer has brackets. OK, so that's a nice little feature. But again, I'm going to go back to my example of the long document with many pages of text and say 10 different fonts that are being used throughout. Should I really be expected to go page by page through the entire document looking for every instance of orange highlighted text? Of course not. There's a much better way of determining if your fonts are loaded or not. Before I show you that, I'm just going to quickly go back to my Font Explorer. And just for purposes of the tutorial, I'm going to once again deactivate Universe 55, go back to InDesign, and right away in design now alerts me that uh, I have my missing font and the orange highlighting comes back. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go up to type, find font. 
And here, find font lists all the fonts that are being used in my document. Now notice that the universe 55 Roman, which we already know is not loaded, uh, InDesign further alerts me to that fact with the yellow triangle with the exclamation point. Okay, so we know that that font is not loaded. And so at this point, um, I am going to go back once again to Font Explorer. I'm going to load it. I'm going to activate the font. Come back here. And we see that the font is loaded. The find font box is a little persnickety. That hasn't gone away. But if I click done, go back up to type find font, now I see that the font is loaded here. OK, last thing. As I'm scanning through my fonts, I see that I'm using Optima throughout. There's also the universe that we've been talking about. But then I see Times Roman. Now, I know that when I was designing this brochure that I had no intention of ever using Times Roman. So somehow that font snuck in there. And because I'm rather anal about fonts, and I love to have my files really clean when I send them to the printer, I want to get rid of that Times Roman font. And before I do that, I'm going to click Done. And I'm going to zoom in close on my document. And you'll understand why in a minute. Let's go back to Type, Find Font. And I'm going to click on Times Roman. And I want to replace that. Well, first of all, I want to find where it's occurring. OK, so I'm going to click Find First. And InDesign immediately jumps and highlights here. And look, Times Roman is appearing in this little dinky word space at the end of this paragraph. And I just want to get rid of that entirely. I know that this text here, the font that's being used here, is Optima Regular. So I want to just replace that Times Roman font with Optima Regular. I'm going to go down here to Replace With. And I'm just going to click, uh, type my Optima. And I have a couple Optima fonts here. I'm going to choose the true type font, which is uh, designated with the TT, because that's what I'm using with all these others. And I want Optima regular. That's correct. OK. Now, I've noticed that a lot of people, after they select their replacement font, they just click Done, and then nothing happens. And so you have to remember to actually choose click Change. OK. And now, Times Roman just totally went away. Now I can click Done. And let's just highlight that, that word space. I go up here, Optima Regular it is. And I am in good shape. Excellent. So now I am certain that all the fonts in my document are loaded. And at this point, if I export it to a press-ready PDF, I can rest assured that the fonts will be embedded. And if I package up all my source files, I'll be confident that all of my intended fonts will be included. And by the way, I'll be talking about exporting the PDF and packaging files in the last video of this series. But for now, stay tuned for step number three, which is converting your spot colors to CMYK. Thanks for watching, and remember you can always email me with InDesign questions at howie at fortuitouspub.com. It's howie at f-o-r-t-u-i-t-o-u-s-p-u-b.com.